Hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, this uh, presentation today from the, from the Octo Project. Um, my name is uh, Nicolas Deschen. I'm here today with uh, David Reynard, and uh, we are very happy to uh, be uh, talking and discussing about the uh, Octo Project LTS uh, releases, uh, which is something which uh, has a very important event which happened in the Octo Project this year, and uh, we are very happy to be talking to you about these things. So uh, first, a little bit about us. Uh, so as I said, uh, my name is Nicolas Deschain. I work at Linaro, and I'm also the uh, Yocto Project Community Manager. So I've been involved with the project and uh, uh, for the last two years as a community manager. Um, David is also here today with us, and we are going to uh, um, talk to you uh, both uh, today. Uh, David is working from Winriver and is uh, at, inside the Yocto project. He's taking charge of the uh, trainings and the uh, developer day. Uh, so we have, uh, we have an agenda for today. Uh, before we get to the agenda, I have a couple of announcements uh, that I wanted to share. Uh, so first, um, there are a few. Uh, this is going to be a very uh, different event, obviously, uh, for everyone, including ourselves uh, this week. Um, so I want to, uh, at least you to know how you can actually reach to uh, the people from the Yocto project or people from our communities. Uh, we have many people that join us for the event and uh, uh, we, we are going to be there at the Yocto project booth. Uh, so the, the Yocto project is a sponsor. So you can come anytime at the booth and just come and talk to us. Um, we also have a dedicated Yocto project Slack channel um, on the uh, L uh, L Linux Foundation event uh, Slack channel. So feel free to just come hang out and ask any questions. We have, I mean, more than 150 people there that can hopefully help, and we, we are really looking forward to the great discussions on, the, on this channel this week. Uh, about the week, uh, we, we have two events that the project has actually also organized. Uh, on Thursday, uh, we are going to do uh, the Yocto Project Dev Day, which is like a full day uh, of uh, sessions and mini summit about the project, and we have folks from our communities that come and just going to talk to us about uh, many things on the project. And later today, uh, tonight, or wherever you are, uh, we also are organizing the Yocto project uh, BOF, the BOF. And uh, I mean, uh, we will be here to go quickly through the uh, updates of the project and talk about uh, any questions you might have and how, what you want to discuss or what you want to know about the project. Anyway, so with that said, uh, let's, get, let's go now and talk about uh, this uh, LTS. Uh, so today, uh, as I said, uh, David and I will uh, go through this presentation. So I will start with a quick um, introduction about what is the Yocto project and the organization and the membership. And then David will guide us through uh, the current release process and uh, what has uh, the recent changes uh, we've made over the last year in um, automated testing and improvements. And then I'll go back uh, and talk to you about uh, the background of the LTS, why we ended up with the LTS and what it is. And finally, David will come back and uh, tell us how actually you can help and get engaged with us. So what is the Yocto project? So hopefully now uh, most people should know. Uh, it's a very old project. It's 10 years old almost. Um, it's basically uh, uh, it's a Linux Foundation uh, hosted project, and it's a collaboration program where that provides all the tools, all the recipes, and everything that you need to actually build your own custom uh, Linux distribution. It's not a Linux distribution. Uh, it's a tool set that actually allows you, uh, users, or I mean, to make products or hobbies or anything to make your own Linux. Whether it's a very small Linux to like a very big Linux, it can actually build anything. It started from the embedded space 10 years ago where things were quite difficult to actually build Linux and build Linux systems, embedded Linux systems. Nowadays, and you will see, it's used more and more, I mean, outside of the uh, embedded, uh, embedded systems. Um, again, uh, it's very important to understand it's not a distribution. It's you don't just go and download something and run it. It's you download all the tools, all the metadata, all the documentation that you need to actually make your own complete custom Linux system. The way the project is organized, so it's an open source project hosted by the Linux Foundation. It was actually the first uh, of the Linux Foundation projects started in 2010. Nowadays, there are actually a very large number of them. Like most of the other Linux Foundation projects, uh, there is a governing board which is made of uh, companies that are also uh, Linux Foundation corporate members. Uh, we have different level of membership from like silver, gold, and platinum. And uh, basically, it's all the companies uh, that want to influence one way or the, or the other the project. Um, the 
governing board, as I say, and can, for example, elect uh, the members of the technical steering committee, which overview the project um, architecture and, and the technical decision behind the project. But it has also, uh, the board also uh, has a say on the, the budget and I mean, how we get to uh, spend uh, the money that uh, the, the project is making from the membership. So um, there is a large number of companies. You can see uh, all these companies on the, on the slide. And uh, definitely, if you are interested to talk and discuss what it means to join or why it might be a good thing to join for your company, we are here all to discuss about these things. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, the way uh, things work, most people will know the Yocto project as, I mean, this, the website and uh, what to do and how to build. But there is, uh, there are actually several teams that actually make up uh, the project. And we are all organized uh, around the advisory board, which is made of uh, one uh, member for a, one, a, one person for every member company. And we're organizing different teams and a couple of uh, officers volunteer some time. I mean, whether it's for community, like I do myself, um, or we also have another advocacy team that is actually taking care of all the marketing um, issues and uh, things that we do for the project. Uh, the TSC, obviously, uh, which takes care of the technical decisions and the governing board more generally is the one, I mean, uh, meeting from I mean, once a month or once every quarter to talk about the general uh, direction of the project, uh, approves the finance of the project and, uh, and all uh, things related, uh, general administration things related to the project. And uh, now I'm going to end off to David, who is going to talk about uh, the current release process of the Yocto projects. Okay, so that's part one of our trip to the LTS release. This is the second part. This is what we're doing right now for our release process. So right now we have a process of milestones per release. We're on a six month cadence. And in each of that cadence, we have, a, in our case, four milestones. The first milestone is kind of combined with the release planning. The second one is where we try to get most of the features, big features done. The third milestone is where we try to get all the working done is kind of our feature freeze and then the final milestone is our um, uh, civility and bug fixing and for each milestone we have the process of having a few q a cycle and we have a few full, uh, <laughs> full release cycle and um, releases and we all try to make sure that every single milestone is as stable as possible so that we can then have a stable uh, cadence as we go forward so we release twice a year in April and October. And um, there's three things to know about that. One is that we're very stable, very regular in our releases so people can depend on the release happening. But of course, there's a tension with that release cycle in that we're always kind of missing a few of the LTSs, a few of the uh, package updates. And so there's always that tension between trying to have something stable and complete and dependable on time, but also might sometimes missing, for example, missing the uh, kernel LTS or GCC LTS or some of the uh, Ubuntu 20 just came out right after released, that kind of stuff. There's always that tension between um, stability, time dependency, and making sure we have the right set of features and everything. So let's go on to the next slide. So, what is in a release? There's the uh, main core components, and that's the OE core, that stands for Open Embedded, our base project. BitBake, of course, is our uh, build system. Betty Yocto, our release, and Yocto uh, documents. We're very, very keen on our documents that go with our release. Major components, as you can see, our ABI, API, the major version upgrades, all the packages, some thousands, 300 packages that we maintain for our cross-build system, new features, of course, and long-term kernel support. New features we'll be working on, for example, the test infrastructure changes, which we'll be uh, covering on a slide later. Automation changes. For a project this big, you have to have automation to kind of survive from release to release. And architectures being added and removed, kind of keep make sure we're up to date with all the latest BSPs to serve our customers. Uh, bug fixes, of course, issue to Yocto Project. We have a very active bug board and um, bug uh, backline. And um, and we also have a very tight integration with all of our upstream projects. Our packages are, of course, the open embedded. Um, we try to work closely with the other projects that make sure we have the greatest and best, at least most up-to-date content for our release. The uh, stable release content, let's just talk about that. So when we release on the cadence you saw before, every October and April, 
that's our initial release. So then we go into stable releases, the, the, the point releases, dot one, dot two, dot three. And in those stable releases, we cover, of course, security and CVE fixes. Those are automatically go in. We try to make sure we have all the CVEs for the all the stable releases that we maintain. We also try to keep up with bugs. So we have a, the bugs found during release by our customers, by our uh, commercial partners. We make sure to get those fixed so we have stable code. Um, certainly, the uh, new distros to try to keep up if uh, Ubuntu or Red Hat uh, or Red Hat or um, Fedora or any of those come up with a new uh, platform, we want to make sure that we cover it. Bug fixes for version upgrades. So that's where we fix what we're supporting. And the unacceptable is the stuff is the, of course, the general version upgrades and the new features. As much as we like to bring new features into um, existing stable releases, we kind of resist against that because we're kind of always moving forward. We want to make sure we don't destabilize the uh, stable releases that people have based our products upon. So strict backport policy will always push the master first, and then we pass, pushed on to the uh, stable releases. And same testing as a regular release. So um, every time we do a point release, several times a year, we make sure we do the full QA cycle, full review cycle, full document update cycle. So that goes there. Going on to the next slide. Stable release challenges. Typically, we uh, maintain things for um, seven months, each of the stable releases. We um, maintain this for, for up to a year for each of those releases. And this is all done, of course, on, we're a community, a volunteer community. So it's all on community time. And we thank our community for supporting and uh, backporting all the patches and maintaining our releases. And this uh, relies on our member resources. So um, they all work together to try to keep everything up to, get up to date and all the bug fixes and CV checks and everything all put into our release. Going on to the next slide. So automated testing improvements, that's part of our strategy for making sure we have a strong release and we can have as big a feature list and big a package uh, matrix as possible. So we have invested a great deal of money and time into our auto builder. 25 builders, 12 host distributions, plus on top of that. And fairly, we made a lot of investment in 2019 to kind of modernize all of our builders. And again, this is how we can maintain our huge matrix of uh, Packages, posts, distributions, features, documentation, and all that. Major improvements these last two years include the need for a manual test to reduce the need for manual testing. So we have invested greatly in p-tests on ARM and x86 with 60 pieces of software, as you can see. We've also maintained strongly the LTP and LTP process tests and, and uh, test rep reproducibility for tool chain and minimum images. And of course, the GCC, the whole uh, architecture is across our main architecture line. And we test 1.9 million tests in every eight hours. And we're pretty proud of that. That's a lot of infrastructure we put together. There's also, I'll just mention a couple of technologies we've added to the Octa project this last year. And that is the binary equivalence and the hash equivalency. And with those, that is certainly for our customers and for our users to uh, be able to have reproducible builds. And the hash equivalency is a way to actually enhance more efficiency with our estate uh, cache. And that investment also helps us with our automated testing. So we get to eat our own dog food and enjoy it too, to really increase our efficiency and coverage. So I'm going to go back to Nicholas. Okay. Thank you, David. So now that we, uh, we discuss and we, uh, we've talked about how we have made uh, releases in the project for the last 10 years, and it's actually quite interesting to see that we have not missed a single release in the last uh, 10 years. I mean, it's been really good for the Octo project. So now uh, the LTS um, is something, is a very, there is a very interesting use case behind the LTS, and that's, that's what we like to talk about is what the membership and how we can actually make such drastic changes and it's a big change in, in the project, which is a very interesting. So um, what, why it happened and what happened and how it happened, basically. Um, so what, what we've heard uh, from uh, some uh, users of the project is that the six month release cadence, which well, it aligns very well with the pace of uh, open source uh, uh, development, which means that it's very easy to have like a very up-to-date system if you actually upgrade to every release every six months. You always get uh, the latest version of all the packages and all the Linux uh, open source components, 
which is great. However, sometimes and in some specific markets, especially in the embedded space, uh, six months, uh, being able to upgrade your system every six months was actually uh, too difficult. Uh, what we've seen and what, what we have observed is that people were actually not upgrading and uh, choosing the basically the, 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 the option of actually never upgrading and sometimes running, I mean, unreliable systems or I mean, very old Linux systems. So basically this ability to release every often, very often has actually made that it was difficult for these companies to switch and follow uh, the, path, uh, the pace of the releases. So what we've seen also, and by discussing and talking uh, in, in the communities, is that uh, many companies, many users of the project were actually doing uh, LTS on their own. So, I mean, they would basically decide to ship with a specific version of the project and they would start maintaining their own LTS. While, I mean, it might be good uh, for their need, uh, what happened is that because there were so many releases, like tw twice a year for the last 10, 10 years, uh, I mean, the chance of actually different companies contributing and helping each other was actually quite low because everybody was actually maintaining their own LTS on their own and it might not be the same range. So we, we didn't see and we did not create like a, a, a process of people who actually collaborate on the LTS and we were, we were seeing like everybody was doing their things on their own. And that was a lack of efficiency for everyone. So over the years, uh, this is something we've heard. Uh, we've heard that at every event, I mean, this kind of events uh, that we do every year, twice a year, all the Linux Foundation events. Uh, we have uh, dev days and we have the mailing list and all the, the these places where people can uh, talk about the Yocto project and with our communities. And uh, I mean, we've heard a complaint and uh, what happened is like at the end of last year, after the last ELCE in Europe, uh, the Yocto project uh, technical steering committee, the TSC, has actually presented a, 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 a made a proposal to the governing board about what it would take to actually uh, design and do the LTS and start the LTS and especially what it would cost and what it would look like. Uh, so they have, we have had like uh, several rounds of discussions, quite interesting and active discussions among all the membership. And the result was that we were able to announce uh, in March, uh, so a couple of months later, that uh, the next release, uh, which, which was done in April 2020, uh, would become the first LTS. So we are very happy that uh, we've been able to address uh, something that was seen as a gap uh, for the project. And again, I mean, not everybody needs an LTS, but the, the users that needed the LTS, uh, for this user, that, that, that was a very important gap. So we've announced that, and now we are going to see uh, what, how we implement the LTS and how we plan to implement uh, the LTS uh, uh, for the Octo project. So basically what we want to do, uh, initially, at least, uh, we want to have an LTS officially maintained by the Octo project uh, that maintained for two years. Uh, this is the initial plan. That's basically the founding that we have today. Uh, we definitely hope that uh, things will actually, people will attract and will start, I mean, collaborating more on the LTS and that will become more important for the project. So we might actually be in a position that we can extend uh, that plan uh, to more than two years. Basically, with quick uh, every two years, there will be a new LTS release, and we will maintain that release for two years. Uh, what we it comes at the cost of uh, reducing uh, the maintenance period for the stable release. So the stable release will be the release which are in between the, the two LTSs, basically. So what's very important about that? It's actually founded by the Octo project. So we've hired, uh, we actually sent uh, a document, and we actually asked for for I mean, people to help. Um, and uh, we've received um, uh, several candidates that I wanted to actually contribute to the project, and we've decided to work with Steve Sackerman, uh, who has been a, a, a developer for the Yocto project since the very beginning. Uh, so it's a very well-known face in the project and in the embedded Linux space, and we are very happy to actually work with Steve today. And Steve has actually become, uh, since, uh, since May, uh, the official maintainer for the, for, the, for the Yocto project for the current release, which is the 3.1 release. So we'll see exactly what all uh, Steve is playing, but basically he's the maintainer. I mean, so you don't necessarily expect Steve to fix all the issues and all the security issues and everything, but Steve is going to be responsible for organizing the community and uh, managing the branch and managing the testing of the branch and making sure that we get like a high quality LTS release and support uh, and within our community. Overall, obviously, uh, this is the Yocto project uh, artifact, so the TSC is responsible for the LTS release, the process, and the TSC is also responsible for the maintainer and the quality of, of his work.
So um, the components, uh, so what, I mean, again, we haven't really talked about that, but the Octo project uh, is, um, can be, can mean many different things uh, for many different people. I mean, they are like a very large ecosystem of layers uh, in the open embedded space. Uh, so it's very important to define uh, what we want to cover, what the Octo project officially covers for the LTS. So obviously uh, we are going to um, cover all the components that actually make up uh, the Yocto project release, uh, the so-called Pocky release, if you want. And it's basically going to cover BitBake, Open Embedded Core, uh, the Meta Yocto base port, which is basically a set of base ports uh, for the reference platforms that we use and that we test uh, the platform. Um, the release, uh, Meta Pocky, which is the reference uh, distribution that uh, the project uses for the testing. And obviously the uh, Yocto documentation as well is part of what is covered by VATS. It's very important to understand what is not covered as well. Uh, so Meta, uh, Meta Open Embedded, for example, is not covered. That's not something that the Yocto project is actually maintaining. Uh, vendor layer, so if you, I mean, if you use the Yocto project, I mean, very likely you use some uh, vendor base port layers or any other uh, layers for different application layers or application vendors. Uh, this is not going to fall under the responsibility of the Yocto project to maintain for the LTS. What we do hope Oh, um, is that um, uh, the maintainers of these layers, at least the main ones, uh, will also adjust and, and work with us. And, and, and maybe, and what we are start, starting to see is that these maintainers want to align and actually support their own layers for an extended period of time as well to actually match what the Yocto project is doing. So again, uh, this is all new and this is just the beginning. Uh, it's been just like two months since we started and we really hope and we really can see that there is there are more and more people that are interested in, into that. And the key thing here now is that there is one release, which is actually known to be the LTS. So there is no confusion now if you are a user of the project, if you are, and if you want to build your product, I mean, you go and you pick the LTS and you know that there are going to be many different companies and many different users that will also use that. So we basically open the door for much more collaboration uh, compared to the past. For the testing, uh, this is a Yocto project. Uh, as I said, this is completely part and integrated into the Yocto project. So the complete testing uh, will be done on the resources. I mean, the Yocto project infrastructure. So um, builders and testers and everything will be done by the project. Uh, we will follow the exact same uh, process and testing process as any release that we do today. And uh, yes, for the testing, what we decided, what the, the TSC proposal was, uh, to only do testing on virtualized uh, platforms, basically QMU on all the architecture, and we will not be running uh, testing on physical machines like uh, we do on the BeagleBone, for example. Um, something which is also quite important to understand, uh, this we will only support a subset of the dis host distribution. Uh, one uh, difficulty uh, for the Yocto project is to keep up to date with all the various Linux distribution out there, the host distribution um, that users can use across the globe. Um, it's it's so very dif difficult to keep the system always building. So we will basically decide uh, on a couple of distributions, maybe like the Ubuntu LTS, and that's the platform that we will uh, use, or the De Debian stable, for example, platforms that we will use for the testing and for, for, for building our LTS release. There are tools inside the project, uh, like CV Check, uh, that can uh, provide uh, insightful details and reports about uh, CVE and security issues that we will be definitely leveraging uh, to actually understand where we are uh, with regards to uh, CV and, uh, and security issues. So again, uh, just to summarize, it's important to understand what it is, what it's not. It's a major change uh, for the Octo project. It's actually the first time that we go and we are able to hire significant resource uh, from the membership and that actually we directly feed into the project. So that's, it's been a very important discussion for the membership. And it's actually a good testimony of what the membership can do. Uh, more members means that we actually have more options and we can do much more for the project as well. So that's, uh, that's definitely something which is very, uh, very that's, this is why I said at the beginning, it's a very interesting use case with when all the members come together and if they want something, I mean, we working with the TSC, we were able to make some big impact. It's, it's, it's a place. It's what we have, what the project provides is all the infrastructures and the maintainer. So that actually the community can come together and collaborate on the LTS. We are not going to claim that we will provide with one engineer, one maintainer, a complete secure system for everything. What we hope is that we will create enough 
uh, noise around that, that people will start contributing. And if you actually look today already on the branch and, and what happens on the mailing list, uh, we see today that there is there are much more uh, patches being merged on the LTS than there has been in the past already. So we, we, we do hope this is actually going to be the winning factor for the project. And yeah, as I said, uh, what the project has the fund and has the resources. So this is going to be supported for the next two years. And we'll see as we reach, uh, as we get closer to the end of this uh, two year uh, period, we will definitely look back and try to understand what happened and what goes well, and what I mean, what does not get so well. And we'll see if we can extend that period and how to deal with that. What it is not, because it's also very important, it's definitely not a replacement. There are actually many companies out there that actually provide a complete solution, uh, OSV for long term, very long term, like think about 5, 10, 15, 20 years of support. And that's definitely not what we want to do. We want to help uh, customers to get onto LTS, but if what you're after is uh, this kind of uh, commercial offering, that's not what the project is going to offer. We won't be able to guarantee that every CV out there will be fixed in a timely manner. We are going to guarantee that we will do our best to provide all the tools that it might be done, but I mean, there is no guarantee that the project has on that. And um, yeah, and obviously, as I said, uh, we are, are going to do uh, uh, the LTS on a subset of uh, the project components and uh, with Open Embedded, uh, the, the number of layers out there is very large and you have to uh, get closer to each layer maintenance to see what their strategy is uh, with regard to LTS uh, support on the long term. So if we actually look now at the Yocto project release, uh, so we used to have master and stable every six months, a new stable. Um, they would overlap uh, 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 each other and people could decide to be on the master branch, contribute to the development of the next release or to be on a stable branch and decide uh, when they wanted to choose. Now what we say is that the project is, give, is going to give users uh, the choice of three different streams um, obviously, uh, the master branch will be there and we definitely hope and want uh, more um, contributors to the master branch. That's basically what, uh, how the project live and, and all the new features come into the master branch. The stable branch will be much shorter. So they are going to be reduced to seven months instead of like the 12 to 18 months that they used to be. And then the LTS is going to be there. So as the user of the project, uh, you will have to decide uh, if you, if which release stream is the right for you. Obviously, master is obvious. I mean, if you want to develop and if you want to actually bring new features into the project. And then if your project uh, requires and, and you have the ability to switch quickly, and like if upgrading your system is actually simple and fast, uh, then you can actually stay on the stable release. And then every six months, every seven months, you basically switch and you keep your system always quite recent in terms of the open source components. And then finally, the LTS. So you can actually start developing your product on the LTS and you have some guarantees about uh, how, how long it will be supported. So how, again, as I said, uh, what we put in place here is a process for you to come and help and contribute to the LTS. The success of the LTS is also how this community is going to come together and contribute to this branch. Again, we don't have the resources and the funding to actually fix everything. So it's all because we are going to come together that we are going to make this LTS better. Um, it's nothing actually very surprising. Uh, it's just basically following the typical and all the standard of the Octo project, um, open embedded contribution guidelines. Just basically we use mailing lists for tags. Um, the idea is uh, it's actually a good idea to send uh, dispatches to Steve. Um, it's also a good idea to tag them uh, with Dunfell, which is the name, uh, the code name for this release. So it's actually obvious to Steve and Richard that this is actually something that is meant to go to the LTS. Obviously you should uh, test this patch. I mean, when you send your patch on a, uh, your backport, that means actually that you have made this patch or you have backported the patch and, and, and you, will, you, you have tested the patch. Um, we, what we want is that uh, all the patch should be uh, sent to master. That's, that's been the, the rule for stable, stable branch uh, all the time. That's many projects do these things. Obviously, we are going to have exceptions uh, when some a newer version of a component is present in master and we need to fix it. I mean, a CV or bug fix. I mean, this is definitely an exception. But most of the time, uh, I mean, we don't expect that you send a patch directly to Dunfell if it's actually something that is applicable or can be fixed on master first. What Steve will be doing, our LTS maintainer, it will basically monitor all the incoming patches 
and uh, make like test branches with like one or many different uh, patches or group of patches. And it will do its own testing, a bunch of uh, build testing and uh, runtime testing on the QMU platforms. And when things look good, uh, it will send uh, the, the patches on the list for review. So people get a chance. Uh, what we see, what we observe sometimes is that Steve is sending like, a, uh, like 20 patches and some people decide that this is probably not something which we want on the LTS. So there is actually discussions and that happens on the mailing list for that. When everything is ready, uh, basically uh, a pull request is sent and Richard is going to merge that into the branch. Um, I put the link here. Uh, this is the branch that contains uh, what is going to be into the LTS soon. So if you want to help with testing with the LTS, that's basically uh, the place to monitor. Again, all the development process just follow the standard convention. So if you are already part of the Yocto project and you are already contributing to Open Embedded, there is nothing new. And if you want to start contributing because you like the LTS, uh, we have many places where we have good documentation that actually explains uh, how to get in touch with our community and how to start contributing. So don't hesitate. Uh, we definitely need all your help. And with that, I'm going to give it back to David for the last few words. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. So how can you help? Because we're an open source group. You can certainly contribute in your bug fixes, your CVEs and security patches, please. Test against the LTS branch with your distro and BSP in case you might find things that we don't cover in our own test matrix. We look, look very much like to have your knowledge brought into our open source. Please report bugs. That's how we can track how things are falling out and what we can address and fix. And please continue the test and de develop on the main release branch so that we can always compare and contrast. And of course, join and support us with the Octo Project so that you can join our community and share the benefits of our people coming together, as Nicholas was saying. So there are surely the bug boards. We have weekly maintenance meetings, technical meetings. Everyone's welcome to join. Um, we have it actually on our listed. We have the uh, minutes listed on our Yachter Project homepage. And you can see what we've discussed, uh, bring up your own questions, talk to the experts directly each once a week. We also have our once a week bug uh, triage where we cover the defects and make sure we get things covered and try to sign the defects as we can. And uh, we welcome you to join and um, help us bash down those defects. And again, reap the benefits of our community coming together and making our distributed uh, repo building system, the Octo Project. And, um, Certainly, yes. And please join us for our Yachta Project Dev Day this Thursday. We can meet the people directly and actually play with the whole system. So I think with that, we're able to move on to the Q&A. OK, so I try to look at the questions of why we were and they were all new to these platforms. I'm very happy to see that two of the two questions were actually about how to uh, start contributing and how to get started with the project. So I'm, I'm very happy to see these these questions. Um, I answer the questions. Uh, I don't know exactly if everybody can see the questions, but on the Yocto project website, um, there is a documentation uh, page where you can see uh, find guides to how to get started with your first build. And then we have guides for we have the guides for different things whether you want to do like a baseball development or like, I mean, recipe development or the full reference manual. So they go, I mean, obviously the, the, the first guides are simpler than the, the last ones, uh, but we have a huge amount of documentation that actually is something which is really excellent with, with the project. So this is there on the Yocto project website. I can't be on Slack at the moment, but again, uh, if you don't find uh, the documentation, we will ask the question, just uh, find, find us on Slack and we'll guide you later. Uh, there was another question about how to get started uh, and if there is some newbies guide. Uh, yes, and uh, so we don't start with the difficult issues. And yes, we have that too. I share this link. So we have a Yocto Project Newcomer uh, wiki page where we basically explain how you can get started with sending your first patch and uh, how do you engage with our community. So there is another question. How common are the security fixes uh, for a particular LTS? Uh, is there a need to update security fix very regularly for an LTS? Uh, I guess, I mean, the answer to this might, might be very specific to the project you are building, uh, but most of the time uh, you should care about the security fix. And uh, yes, I mean, it's very likely that you need to update. And that's actually one of the reasons why we, we are setting up the LTS.
So Nicholas, okay. I cannot see the question. So this is all up to you. Um, somebody says the page is empty. I mean, I don't know exactly what this is. Please, um, yeah, I mean, there is a question that the page is empty. So please uh, come on Slack. Uh, I'll be there later, David will be there, and there are actually many people, I mean, all the key people from the project are actually hanging out on, on the Slack channel and will be able to help. Is there a way to do a one-off uh, monetary donation to the Yocto project? Um, yes, there are ways, and please find me somewhere, and we can talk more about that if you want to do that. Um, that's, uh, yes, that's right, that, I mean, be becoming a member is kind of, uh, you engage a company for like, it's more, it's not like a short term donation. It's more like a long term engagement, uh, but there are different ways you can help the project if you want. And yes, find me on Slack or anywhere and I will definitely help you with that. Okay. Questions keep coming. Sorry. Uh, will there be releases or tags uh, within the LTS branch? Yes, there will be uh, like uh, we have the dot release, the famous dot release that we've been doing. I think we've released a 3.1.1, .1, which was the first dot release on the 3.1. Yes, two David? weeks ago. Yep, two weeks two ago. Weeks ago. So, yes, there will be. Um, I don't know exactly how soon we will have releases, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, there will be release. And if you want to know the cadence, please, again, uh, uh, come and uh, find me some on, 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 on Slack. Are there any suggestions for backporting newer recipes into older distro? David, do you... Mm -hmm. Sorry, say again. Are there any uh, suggestions for backporting newer recipes into older distro? So, like so if, if you're uh, fixing, yeah, if you're fixing an existing yeah. version, you're just updating the recipes and the content, then definitely yes. If you're trying to fix defects against older uh, existing released uh, versions of the packages, definitely yes. What we're just trying to avoid is the bumping versions. We want to make sure that we that stable branch of the LTS branch are stable to the versions and that all new versions of packages happen on master. They go into the next next stable release for the next uh, LTS. And again, I mean, this is going to be a two year period. So we know we are going to have to make exceptions and we will deal with exceptions when they go and when they come. Um, I mean, there are situations that maybe we will not be able to actually follow exactly the rules that we've set. And uh, again, uh, that will be discussed um, on our regular developer mailing list. It will be discussed with the TSC and we'll see how to proceed. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, we are not going to upgrade a large number of packages. I mean, uh, in the LTS, that's actually the promise of the LTS is that you don't change uh, the API, the API uh, of the system. Okay. I see so question number 10. Let me take question number 10. Do you test a security fix against your entire Yalta project package for an LTS? So yes, we do test the entire, we do a full QA run, everything. So when we get a, a security fix, we will, it'll be gathered with all the other fixes for that particular update for the uh, LTS or stable release, and we'll do a full QA. So the question, the answer is yes. That was from Bindu. Okay. Sorry, now I actually found more questions. So this interface is also new for us. So how many years do you support the LTS? Two years, initially, that's what we are founding for two years. We do really hope that more members will actually come together and join and we'll get more funding. But at this moment, we have the founding for two years. But there is good chance that most, many companies will want uh, more LTS and more contributions and we hope it will uh, come. Is that better to use Yocto than use the high-level tool suite uh, Peta Linux from Xilinx? Is a source code uh, okay? So that's a really good question. Uh, that's slightly away from the LTS. Uh, there are many companies out there that actually use and make their own Linux system that also use the same tools and guidelines and uh, the, the layer model from Open Embedded. Um, so we, what, what we have done inside the, the Yocto project is this, we have a compatibility program 
where uh, members of the project can actually claim that what they do on top of the project, whether it's a application layer, where it's a, whether it's a distro layer or some base port, is actually compatible uh, with the Yocto project. And be compatible means that you are a nice citizen and you basically follow all the rules and the guidelines that we do in the core of the project and you do that in your own projects. So what that means is that you can start mixing. So you can basically go from one vendor and get their distribution and then you go to your uh, board vendor and get their base port and then you can take things from the Yocto project and you can actually make your new Linux system which actually, actually makes made from bits and pieces from various places. So I'm not going to say one way, I mean, one is better than the other. Uh, hopefully, if all the vendors out there provide uh, layers which are compatible with the guidelines uh, that are provided by the Yocto project, you can actually mix and match and then take bits and pieces from different places. So that's actually the promise of the project. There is a compatibility program. So we actually run tools on, we can actually run tools on your layer, on your behalf to make sure that you behave well and don't do make obvious mistakes. Uh, that will make your layer something that is going to break some somebody else's layer, for example. So if, again, if that's something that you're interested, come and talk to us later, and we can definitely chat for longer. Uh, Meta Open Embedded is not covered by LTS. It's actually not, I mean, the question is that. Uh, it's not covered by the Yocto Project LTS founding. That's what I said. Um, and uh, the question is, do you still take patches for two years? Uh, I think it's a question for the Meta Open Embedded Maintainers, uh, and you can find them on Slack, I'm sure. Uh, you can ask the questions there. Uh, the, we do hope that overall, yes, I mean, this will happen, but again, this is really a question for the Meta Open, open Embedded Maintainers. You mentioned not changing the API in the LTS branch, is that strict, or do you allow additional features, letting use of backport features from head into LTS? It is strict, and we are open to exceptions when there is enough consensus, or when I mean something happens that is actually when it's actually needed. We made like an exception, like uh, in the last two weeks, for some, I mean, for some reasons. Again, um, if you have something like that in mind, I mean, we need more concrete details. Uh, for sure for that. Uh, again, I mean, the, the role is strict, but open to exceptions. I mean, when, I mean, when there is no better options. Uh, someone is asking, I think again, will there be release on releases or tags on the LTS branch? And I think I answered that, but yes, there will be. Uh, there will be, there is already the Yocto 3.1.1 tag, which has been actually applied two weeks ago on the, on the LTS branch. So yes, and there will be 3.1.2, uh, hopefully soon. So I see a question. How common are the security fixes for a particular LTS? Like, is there a need to update security fixes very regularly for LTS? So we have a regular release cycle. You'll see them the dot one, dot two, dot three, and we accumulate all the security fixes into those. So definitely, if you want to keep up with security fixes, watch for those dot releases to be announced. And it'll be every couple months. And that is where you can make sure you have the latest, greatest of the LTS branch, including in this case, the security fixes. I'll also ask, there's a question I see, is there a way to do one-off monetary donations? Yes, please, to the Yocto Project. Asking, yes, yeah, small team. Uh, yes, please contact Nico or the community um, or Richard, and they can certainly set you up with the uh, uh, con contribution. And we very much appreciate that. Okay, so... And I see the next question, will there be releases or tags within the LTS branch? And so, yes, that is the dot releases I was mentioning. As Nico said, we just came out with 3.1.1. That's our first a branch on the LTS release, and we'll be following those every few months with a dot two and a dot three throughout the life cycle of the LTS. And that's how you can track where we are with the LTS. Okay, there is one more question. Do you fear that having an LTS will encourage people to stick to that and uh, use old software instead of moving uh, into a recent release? Well, I mean, we've decided that we wanted to have LTS, so we definitely want actually people to actually sit on the LTS and use the LTS. Again, I mean, we, I mean, the project cannot make a decision. That's basically a product owner decision, whether you want to run a stable LTS for, I mean, 
two years, five years, ten years for that's basically what the product requires, or if you need to be recent. Uh, so again, that's something we can re we cannot really decide for the product owners. Uh, there was no choice before; it was not possible to have the LTS, so we wanted to have one more choice on the table for the users, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, definitely, I mean, if if there is a need to have a very stable software maintained for a long time, I mean, it, that's a place for the LTS. So yeah, I'll be a follow up on that. So definitely we don't fear it, we actually encourage it because uh, as Nico mentioned, the uh, previous problem was that everyone had their own LTS branch and so everything was like divergent. So this really allows us to be convergent on LTS and we can all really share and cross pollinate our res uh, resources and uh, things on the same LTS branch. So this is a good thing. And so we ourselves, we like to work on master and on LTS in my own company. So that's where we focus on. And uh, everyone has their own solution, depending on their life cycle speed, but definitely don't fear it. This is this is good for all. Okay, I think uh, we are reaching the end. So thanks everyone yes, thank for you. this interesting virtual experience. That was a first for, I guess, both of us. And on the last uh, last uh, slide, you will find I mean, how you can actually get in touch with uh, our community. We just, we, I mean, I mentioned mailing list a lot. But we're also there, I mean, on various social media. I mean, we have uh, videos on YouTube. We are, I mean, also using uh, Twitter and LinkedIn quite a bit and, and Twitch as well from time to time. So uh, thanks, uh, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Um, if you have any questions, we'll be hanging there on, uh, on the Yocto Project channel, uh, Slack channel, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to answer all the remaining questions. Thank you. I'd also like to thank you, the ALC staff for really helping us out and our technician who's been helping us out with this uh, presentation. Yes, it's been new for us and very enjoyable. Thank you for joining us.